Hey, welcome back up there. You're now hanging from the ceiling. Uh, a little bit more safe of a tripod mount for you. I hope you feel comfortable. Glad to see you came back. So we're on the portrait quilt. Doesn't look too fabulous because you're just looking at the backing. I'm just going to use a solid back on this. It's an art quilt. It's going to hang on the wall. I'm not worried at all about the way the back's going to look. I also like the way it shows off the outline of the, the stitching, the quilting that happens, and the characterization of the faces. So anyways, I, I'm going to give you a very fantastic demonstration on pressing the creases. How could that be fun? Well, I actually have something I want to talk about, believe it or not. Uh, when we get fabric, and of course a lot of us take classes, we buy our fabric right there from the instructors or the quilt shops or wherever we're one, getting the wonderful instruction from, and we always have this nasty, that's why you've got the full aerial view here of the 44 selvage by selvage 44 inch goods, always have this real nasty crease in the fabric, and you can smooth it and all these different things, but what I found happens a lot of times in class is students will come, they'll take a piece of fabric straight off the bolt and they'll just press the seam and they'll use a bunch of steam on the seam. That's not steam a seam, it's steam on the seam. And what happens later on is the, the fabric actually shrinks only in that location. Fabric wasn't pre-washed, there's all kinds of shrinking that happens. So anyways with that, my rule of thumb when ironing, I prefer not to use steam but I do use a mist bottle, a spray bottle with a nice uh, distilled water in it or reverse osmosis water, not a real hard chemical or hard uh, mineral deposits in there. And what I do, remember Sherman, the big heavy duty iron? Okay, well if you don't remember Sherman, please see some of the other videos. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going, ooh that's not so good, there, this is what I wanted. I am going to mist everything. See this way I'm actually pre-shrinking the entire piece of fabric slightly. See, it's already doing weird stuff. And then that way I can press with my heavy iron, nice and smooth, until all that fabric dries up. And yeah, sure, steam would work, um, but remember, Sherman's been dropped so many times, Sherman the iron, that is, has been dropped so many times, he doesn't hold water. And I always have my iron set for hot and dry because I use so much fusible web product and that way I don't accidentally get spitting from my iron. This way the iron doesn't spit because the moisture came from the spray bottle. Not too bad of an idea, huh? Told you there's a little bit something exciting in the ironing. And then also I'd like to remind you in an earlier discussion that fabric has memory. I'm not moving this piece of cloth until it totally cools down because I want it to stay flat. What that means is, fabric having memory, that when you have a piece of fabric, it always wants to go back to the state it was in when it was last cool. Take a wadded piece of cold fabric, lay it out flat, press it, pick it right up, it will have those wrinkles in it. Again, if you don't believe me, just ask. I'll tell you, it's true. Now that this fabric has cooled a little bit, right, I'm going to relocate. Pretty basic. Look at that crease. That thing's a monster. I'm going to mist some more. Remember, when it comes to steam on, or moisture on unwashed fabrics, it's all or nothing for me. Starting back in the center on that real heavy crease from the bolt from the factory. And now I'm just going to, again, glide my big heavy iron over this until all the moisture is gone. Let it cool. Hey, okay, and I'm going to invite you back in a few minutes to check out what I'm doing as far as the basting. Nothing necessarily thrilling there either. Just show you how I use the curved safety pins and um, show you how I use my clamps as well as some of the blue painter's tape to get things dialed in for the basting. And next step is my favorite step, the free motion machine quilting. So stay with me. Be right back. Get this thing sandwiched up and ready for quilting. Okay, the fabric's all pressed out. You ready to get this thing basted? Here's the next thing I'd like to share with you. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use these clamps to lock the fabric down along my work table. See those way over there? Lock those down along the work table. But first, oh my goodness, spring loaded. First, I'm going to set a piece of tape. So I've already laid the quilt on top of this for position sake. 
and I want a little bit of fabric right along the edge of my table over here because I'm going to be able to put clamps here and I will also want my fabric coming off the edge of my table here I'm going to be able to put clamps here so instead of using four pieces of tape I'm going to be able to get away with one big piece of tape so sorry about the noise of the microphone there ladies and hopefully some gentlemen out there watching tonight and I'm going to take set a nice straight line I'm using a little narrow tape so I'm still being a little wasteful I want a second line for stability so blue painters tape is in position now starting at one edge I smooth down and I clamp I smooth down and I clamp now notice what happened when I pulled on that corner got a nice clamping and it's just going to take another little one down here to hold it. Got a variety of different clamp sizes. The nice thing about the clamps, repositionable. Good for the environment. No waste, except for that piece of blue tape up there. Once we're taped and clamped, we're ready for the batting. I'm gonna use my favorite, the Hobbs Heirloom. It's an 80% cotton, 20% poly. And I'm just gonna hand smooth it across here. I am not one to tape, pin, clamp my batting. I want it to be able to just float free from the center. Now if anyone wants to argue that point with me, I'm cool with that. I'm still learning. Get a hold of me at www.robappel.com and tell me why I should be stabilizing my batting. But I like to just hand smooth it just like yay. Okay, here's that close up of the quilt and you can see the safety pins in a somewhat gridded out, organized fashion. Bring you in a little closer, remind you what I was speaking about. Here you see the safety pin, not on the applique. I'll free motion machine stitch to about this point. I'll stop, I'll remove the safety pin. I'll continue stitching on along this line. That will then anchor all of this work as I move on to the dad's face. So from here on out, I'm going to go ahead and scissor trim the batting and the quilt backing away leaving about a two inch perimeter all the way around the exterior of that black border and then I get to go to the hot rod quilting machine hold on to your hats ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have some serious fun next <laughs>